got a question here that tests your knowledge of the reactions of amino acids. So it starts by telling you about the amino acid serine and you have to draw the organic product for the reaction of serine with sodium carbonate solution and then reaction two with this alcohol in the presence of sulfuric acid. We've got to suggest a use for the organic compound formed in this reaction. And then we're given some more reactions of serine, told that it's used in organic synthesis. And on the next page, we've got to start completing some information about these reactions. So reaction three, what would the reagents and conditions be for this change here? And what types of reactions are reaction four and reaction five? Part B moves on to compound E. We're told that it has this molecular formula and that it's one of two optical isomers. It can be oxidized by tollens to form an alpha amino acid F. The alpha amino acid forms two different polymers, G and H, and we're given the empirical formulae of the two polymers. So we've got to suggest structures for compounds E and F, draw repeat units for polymer G and polymer H, and describe how F forms G and H. The question moves on to a different amino acid now based around glutamic acid. We are given the repeat unit of polyglutamic acid and we have to draw the structure of glutamic acid from this. We're then told that a student tries to prepare polyglutamic acid from glutamic acid but no polymer was actually found in the product mixture. The student isolated two major compounds in the mixture and the mass spectra showed molecular iron peaks at M over Z129 and M over Z258. We've got to come up with structures for the two compounds. Next part of the question, polymer J, um, we're given the repeat unit and we have to say what the functional groups are in polymer J. And then we've got to come up with the structures of the two monomers that would form polymer J and we've got to display the functional groups in each of the monomers. And then the very last part of the question, polymer J is used in hairspray, can be washed away easily with hot water, suggest why. So the reactions of serine, so serine is going to react with sodium carbonate solution and form this salt here so we have O minus Na plus make sure that there's no bond between the O and the Na otherwise that would be marked wrong the next part of the question I've actually not included the final thing so hopefully you have so obviously you're going to get an ester forming between this alcohol group and this carboxylic acid group so there it is there and can you see what I've missed out the fact that this is carried out in the presence of acid would mean that this NH2 group would actually be an NH3 plus group so that there for the third mark should be NH3 plus so well done if you got that so this is an ester what would you use it for perfume or flavoring then we've got these reactions now. So the next part of the question, how would you carry about reaction three? So we're going from halogenoalkane essentially to an amine. So that's done with ammonia in ethanol. What type of reaction is reaction four? That is an oxidation reaction. So going from alcohol to carboxylic acid and what type of reactions taking place to go from here to here? Well, we've 
broken the ester bond and so this is hydrolysis. So part B now, you can see I've got a lot of red sort of scribble down here. This is my thought sort of thought process as I'm reading through the information. So it can be oxidized by tollens. So I'm saying E must be an aldehyde to an alpha amino acid F. Little reminder to myself what an alpha amino acid looks like. So what I've done here is just added up the atoms in an alpha amino acid. So you've got two carbons, four hydrogens, a nitrogen, two oxygens, and the R group. And so compound E must be the aldehyde version of this because this gets turned into that with the tollens. So E must look like this. So that would be C2H4NOR. And I've subtracted from the total number of atoms in E what we've just worked out there. And that means we can get the R group as C2H3. So E, therefore, is this molecule here. So there's that C2H3 R group. So it's obviously a carbon-carbon double bond. And there's that alpha amino acid. So it's just the same, essentially. But instead of CHO, it's COOH. Time for the polymers now. So we're told polymer G has empirical formula C4H7NO2 and H has the empirical formula C4H5NO. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count up the atoms in F. So that's one, two, three, four. Four carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hydrogens and two oxygens and obviously that nitrogen as well. So you can see that polymer G has exactly the same empirical formula as F, the starting material. And so therefore G must have been formed by addition polymerization. So that means that this carbon-carbon double bond has opened up and we've basically added them all together that way. So there's no loss in atoms, and that keeps the empirical formula the same. So it looks like that. And then if we go to, or you can see I've written up there, this has got the empirical formula C4H5NO. In other words, that's minus H2O compared to the empirical formula of F. So this one must have been formed by condensation polymerization, and so... We need to orientate it so we can take the H off the NH2 group and the OH off the carboxylic acid group. And so we get this repeat unit here. And you can see I've sketched that there in red. Polyglutamic acid now. So if this is the repeat unit, we've got to turn it back into the glutamic acid structure. But we're just going to add water onto this. So we add an H on this end and an OH on this end. You can see I've written up there the MR of this is 147. That's going to be very, very helpful when we draw or work out the structures of these molecules that are formed. Remember, they're not polymers. So the fact that this first one has an MR or N plus peak at 129 is telling us that going from this to this, we've lost an H2O molecule. So we've lost 18, a mass of 18. So what's happened is we've formed a ring structure by taking the OH from the carboxylic acid group, which would have been here, and the H from the NH2 group. And it's just coiled round, and this carbon and nitrogen have actually joined together. There's the structure of the other one. So basically, the M over Z at 258 is two glutamic acids minus two waters minus 36. So have a look at the structure of this. 
we essentially need to join two of these together and lose two water molecules in the process. So if you can imagine another one of these drawn the other way around so that the NH2 group is next to us, this COH group down here and this COH group is opposite the NH2 group of the other molecule. It's difficult when I haven't drawn it, so apologies for that. And then you just take out two water molecules and just join them together. So you get that. The final part of the question about polymer J, you can see all I've done is I've displayed out these key parts of the polymer chain so we can see what functional groups we're going to have. So we've got an ester group, this C double bond over here, and this C single bond here. So obviously this part of the chain would be picked up here and would have an ester group there, and there's your amide group there. So the monomers used to make this polymer, well, this, this part here would have started out as a dicarboxylic acid. You can see that there. And here we would have had an amine group and an alcohol group. So we've got this monomer here. And finally, why is polymer J able to be washed away easily with hot water? And it's because this condensation polymer can be hydrolyzed. And if you remember, it's this bond here, this um, amide bond breaks, and also the ester bond can break as well.